Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being here for the third talk of Paris Plus by Basel Conversation, which will be 10 things to know uh, about buying art in 2023, with uh, the collector Philippe Dian, the co-founder of Mendes Wood DM, Philippe Dimap, and the art advisor, Patricia Marshall. It will be moderated sorry, uh, by Dr. Jenny Fulton, uh, head of editorial at Art Basel. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, and welcome also from my side to the third talk uh, here in uh, the Musée de Picasso. And I'm very grateful that uh, I'm joined on the panel by um, Philippe Dion, who is a collector and a lawyer based in Paris, and he's the president of Les Amis de Palais de Tokyo. And if my French pronunciation is suspect, please bear Fantastic. with me. Fantastic. Ah, thank you. <laughs> See, already. But we can say friends of, uh, Ami of Palais de Tokyo. <laughs> friends of Palais de Tokyo. So there we go. <laughs> Um, in the middle is Philippe Mab. Is that pronounced correctly? Yeah. Wonderful. He is a founding partner of the gallery Mendeswood DM, uh, which is based in Brussels, Sao Paulo, and since this weekend, here in Paris. Next door. Next door. So <laughs> do Please come visit. <laughs> and then last but not least, on my right-hand side, we have Patricia Marshall, who is an art advisor, but also a collector, and based in Paris. <laughs> Mexico, sometimes. Yeah. Mexico. Mexico sometimes, and she spent 23 years in California. Yeah, exactly. So, um, and so the, the, the topic of this panel is 10 things to know about buying art in 2023. Now, why did we choose this topic this year and not say last year? Because surely collecting art is a long process, it takes time to think about things. However, this year we've seen a number of shifts both in our society and in the art market that have you know, slowed things down a little bit. Last year, we had an extreme increase in prices. We had people spending more money than ever after the pandemic. People wanted to buy art. They wanted to re-engage with the wider world. They wanted to travel. They wanted to see their friends again and just re-engage with the art world. But this year, we've seen a little bit of a quietening down. People are taking more time to buy art. They're taking time to think about things a little bit more. They're taking also time to maybe not just buy off a PDF, you know, which was quite common last year. And I think I, my esteemed panel are here to discuss sort of what the shifts have brought last year and you know, what their own personal opinions on these changes are. And I'd actually like to start off with sort of a general discussion amongst the three of us, the four of us, and then we're going to go into my 10 hypotheses. And when we go into my 10 hypotheses, ple please feel very free to agree or disagree, but please always tell me why. Um, all right, so let's start out. As we know, this year has been quite tumultuous, many changes from ongoing global conflicts, high interest rates, a volatile economic environment. Patricia and Philippe, in your experience, how has that impacted art purchasing this year? What's the general sort of mood been amongst your friends, your collectors, your fellow gallerists? So what I have to say... <coughs> On ne t'entend pas. Non, no, ça ne croit, je crois. Ça marche bien. Oui, bon, uh, hello. Um, so what I have to say, first of all, it's an art story, it's a love story. Uh, it's desire, so, you know, like love, there is no logic. So it's an impulse, it's, uh, and people still have that, in, even if there is all the problem, look what's happening today, Paris is booming, there is, uh, the, the, the art fair was like full, it was, looked like the subway. So you are, it, we are <laughs> in a bubble, and it's, it's like, uh, it's very human. So, you know, we're not going to start speaking about love, we <laughs> but it's, mm -hmm. there is no logic. So thank, thank God it's still here, and the desire and the, um, the, the welcoming of all those galleries who are here uh, yeah. create this, uh, this energy which is quite remarkable for Paris. We are back to before the war. And, uh, and I the think... The 1930s, yes. you mean, yes. And so you cannot resist to your uh, impulse and to your desire. Philippe, do you want to comment on that? Yeah. Having just opened? 
We're super happy to, to, to have opened the space here. Okay. It, is, it is a beautiful, important moment for Paris, of course. And as you said, like the, there is a, the, 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 the market has changed and it's been changing a bit. And there is a side of this that is very, very interesting. Like maybe so many people are also like leaving the game and like so, and the art world is again becoming a place for people who are really passionate, as Patricia mm -hmm. was saying. But also, what I must say, <laughs> it's very fashionable. So fashion is everything. So there are so many people who have been uh, saying collecting, but we will go to that conversation, what is collecting, buying, and it's still here because it's a way of living and it's a way of, uh, it's a social living. Uh, and, you know, you are invited to different dinners, you have parties, you have, uh, and, and the object is here and you want it. So I know that you know all the, but you forget, you know, there is all the elements. I'm telling you, it's like love. You, you meet someone who they tell you it's not the right person, but you go for it. <laughs> so, so I think it's a very, uh, it's a very human and a very important aspect into art. Felipe, what, what's your view there? Because you're saying the mood has changed slightly this year, you know. You know what, like I, I, I believe that again, it's a, it's a system for the passionate ones. So it's uh, like maybe in a moment there were like so many people buying art as Patricia just mentioned now. For fashion. For fashion and maybe not for the right reasons as and well. not for the right reason and at all. Instagram was a big thing. I think it's terrible to, to buy through Instagram. Uh, what is good right now, I think it's the time to look back at art history and to take a breath and to look at what art is about, you know, the idea of art. And I think it's, uh, it's, a, it's the right moment. I think for the artists, it's the best moment. You know, all the best artists came from the war. As the war 1945 came out, so many good artists. You have all those great movements who came out, so it's the time where creation is going to happen. And I think uh, we are living a major moment. And all the people who are there just for the fun and the speculation are going to go. So maybe real people are going to we come back and we are going to speak about art as the way it is. That's a very positive way to frame the sort of slowdown, the sort of correction we've seen since the beginning of the year. And I must say, I do personally tend to agree with it. There's a lot of people who were buying maybe for speculative reasons last year, you know, on a very kind of, they were kind of new into the game. They were new to art collecting. They didn't really know what they were doing. They just saw that young artists were being resold for really high prices. And what we've seen now also in kind of the research is that people are taking more time to resell, they're holding on to artworks for longer. It's a more considered relationship. I want to turn to you now, to, to you now, Philippe. Uh, you've often emphasized that your journey is a very personal one. So I'm wondering what 2023 has marked for your. I've, you, you, you've often emphasized that your collecting journey is very personal, and I was wondering what has 2023 meant for your own collecting journey. Yes, uh, 2023 was a great year for French collectors, <laughs> because uh, we could see uh, the rising of Paris. Uh, many galleries are coming, uh, all international galleries now, and, uh, but we are going to talk about this later on. But uh, for my personal journey in art, it was very important now. The increasing of sales in Paris, increasing of new galleries, auctions Auctions are also uh, increasing uh, the, their offer. Uh, you could see the previews uh, in the Sotheby's and Christie's in Paris, which was uh, much better than uh, in, in London uh, last week. Uh, so uh, for my personal journey, because I'm here as a collector and a French collector and a Parisian collector, uh, it means um, that uh, uh, also also, I could see in all these uh, galleries and auction houses that uh, um, the market was much more calm 
and uh, the prices were decreases. Which is good. Uh, so <laughs> it was a very good, very good, very good, very good information for French collector also, uh, because uh, it was a recentered, uh, overvalued artist uh, com came down and are more accessible and more reasonable uh, levels of price. So I can only uh, be happy of this. And uh, I think uh, most important artist, uh, the market is uh, refocusing on important artist, and that's also uh, very good news. So I think uh, 2023 is a very good year to buy. <laughs> yeah, very good. <coughs> and I think some uh, artists are going to be French artists, because we, I don't know, as uh, I, I'm more international, I think it's the time for French artists to become, uh, you know, important again, and to have, yes, a, have a voice. Uh, I didn't the... really notice that. Yes, I, we did not notice, I, but it will be great that... It's true like that. The, yes, the, the it's the time for them to be doing something in France, and maybe some galleries should be supporting the French scene, really, because I come from the United States, and it's a protectionist uh, country, and in Mexico, where I uh, live part-time, it's very protectionist too, and they support their artists, and uh, supporting their artists, museums should be supporting, galleries should, should be supporting, and it's time for them to, to have an international voice. So I hope with this happening, it, uh, yes, that would be great. Yeah, but, uh, would be great uh, you you already see the, the results of this? Because I don't. You no, say in your is, introduction uh, that uh, many uh -huh. new galleries in Paris, but not especially to buy French art. No, I didn't no, notice. no, no. But it's, it's always the time for them to uh, take a foreign place. arts. And uh, French artists are not. Uh, uh, because I would like to. Yeah, but, but, uh, uh, I think uh, why do you think that what do you think of this? Because you the, think? Museum, the museum don't support them. They are not supported, and the, the galleries are not supporting. So maybe it's at the time they take yes, uh, uh, the part. Time. The, the energy is here, so meaning that they're going to meet. So it's time to create, and you create in pain, because we are, we are suffering right now, inflation, so all the problems, and, uh, and pain has always uh, been a good motor for for creation. So you hope there's going to be more French artists active and then we're going to see this movement. Philippe, what's your voice? Are, no, I, I absolutely agree with Patricia. Like right now we are seeing a whole new French generation of French yeah. artists that are like, like booming and name? flourishing artists with whom we work with, like Paul Tabouré, like yeah. Neil yes. Belloufa, mm -hmm. yeah. like and, and, and like and showing different ways of uh, dealing with the cultural inheritance of France. Yeah. It, with the cultural inheritance of France and in, and in dialogue with the world. Yeah. Like, and and I, I believe that we're going to see much more of that. Like Paris at the moment uh, is holding so much energy and uh, th that, I think it, that is going to be translated in that. Are really helping and as well. And also, though. yes, yeah. you, know, you know, when you look uh, in art history, I always say this, uh, there is, you look, uh, the leader of the economy is uh, create artists. You don't have artists without collectors. Mm. So when you look in the 60s after the war, is, uh, in America is the explosions of society, society of consumptions, and you have all those movements were born, like pop art, minimalisms, and all this. After in, in England, you mm. had uh, 20 years ago, I am not good with date, you have the explosions of their economy, and all this English school came out, and all the Mianers and all those people came out, and they were the leader of the economy, Germany, uh, all this. So it shows. In France, I think, I must say, they have been very too uh, supported by the, the states, mm. FRAC and FNAG, whatever. And uh, I think it's time for them to, 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 to get a voice and to, to be there too. Oh, and and Paris, ha Paris has been witnessing this yeah. like new movement of, yeah. of private foundations that have been opening up in the past years, like the Bourse de Commerce, the La Fête Anticipation, mm -hmm. the Fondation Louis Vuitton, like there is a lot going on. And also like this, yes. is, this is reflected immediately in the, in, in, in the quality and also in the, all the stimulus that is given to artists directly, no? Yes, exactly. So, 
And that's going to take some time to filter through. We're going to see, we're seeing the first exhibitions. I mean, you mentioned Paul Tabouri. He's a very young artist. What, what, when was he born? 1990s, something like that? That's yeah. That's yeah. So that's he's, one. yeah, he's like, uh, what, <laughs> Gen Y, you know? No, Gen Z even. And uh, so, so you've got that kind of younger generation coming into it, and they've got very different concerns. They're quite political as well. Uh, wh why did Mendes Wood decide to open up here in Paris this like, year? W this, this year specifically, like, we, 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 we found an amazing space. We found a very, very special space with a lot of character. I hope everyone has had the chance to visit us. We're just around the corner. And we started looking for a space in a moment when we felt that after Brussels, we had the energy and we had the will to expand a bit our operations and, uh, and our energy in Europe. And Paris made sense as a city that was just next door, like where, uh, in a place where, where for us as a gallery, we, were, we felt always very comfortable. We have so many friends here. <laughs> like we work with French artists, we, have, we work with so many different French collectors and museums. And we started looking for a situation that was special for us here. When we found it, we just jumped it, so jumped on it immediately. So, do you think that the, you have really an audience here for, of your art? Because maybe you talk about little, a little bit about the concept behind your gallery program, because it is quite specific. You sell quite political art. You have a lot of art, uh, artists who work with environmental topics, such as Daniel Stegman Macrone, for example. Um, and you have artists who are not just making wall work. So is there an audience here for that sort of...? Well, I, I, I believe so. You mentioned Daniel Stigman, who is an artist yeah. who works with us since the beginning of the gallery. He's an artist that Patricia mm -hmm. has been supporting yeah. since a long time and who's been enormously supported by friends. So he's already had so many uh, beautiful opportunities, institutional opportunities in France. And we believe that we can also give him uh, more light in Paris now. So like... Uh, that this, this city has an audience that is not only the audience of the city of Paris, but it's Paris also as a meeting point. Mm -hmm. Like, it's a, it's, a, it's a city where people pass, it's a city where people want to see each other, it's a city where people come, people come to Paris to like, get content, to exchange content, and that's what we're looking for as a gallery. Do you think that this is also, I mean, also looking at you, Philippe, what do you think has provoked this change over the last five years? I mean, re really since COVID, the, this, there is this new energy in the city. I mean, a lot of people point towards Brexit as yes, kind of I a key... I believe very much so, it's Brexit. Because, uh, if I must say, can I say? I think that you have a VAT of 5% five, five here, so you attract... All Europe. So, if you are in Germany, you know more than the, I think it's 25 percent the VAT. 20. 20 percent. 19. 19. So it's a free, free, free circulations. So you have a wider public, no? Don't you think if you <laughs> if you're paying five percent taxes? Yeah, 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 so yeah, but yeah, yeah. About tax. you, I think you can send it to Germany. And you have, uh, you know, it's, uh, I think it's, um, uh, you know, now it's in England and they have 20% uh, uh, They have import fees now as well. And yes. I mean, you just have much higher barriers yes. to trade. So if you, I mean, if you purchase it in London at the moment and you leave it in the free port, you're probably yeah. okay. But if you want to take it home with yeah, you, it's you trickier. Germany, yeah. If you are in Germany, you, you have to pay your uh, taxes to here. Yeah. You come, you have a nice weekend. And uh, you buy nice art, and all the, the gallery will be here. What is you, your view here, Philippe, uh, on the, why the rise of Paris over the last five years? Why Paris is yeah. going on? Yeah. Well, there are many reasons. First, because London is declining because of Brexit. That's uh, very easy to understand. In all, in all segments of business, uh, commencing by finance and then all business and so business of art the same as the others. London is, is declining. And by the same time, Paris uh, met its time because election and re-election of President Macron, which is uh, um, in foreign countries, understood as a young president uh, giving dynamism and uh, making France back in business and Paris back in business. So I think it's a uh, very important element also. It, it gave di di dynamism. Uh, and so... Um, <coughs> 
the France story also, of Paris. We, in Paris also, we have many contemporary museums. We had already uh, you have a, critical a lot, mass. but we have yes. now a new one, Bourse de Commerce of mm. François Pinault. And this, François Pinault is a French guy. Mm. He is uh, one of the huge, biggest world collector. He, he, he owns Christie's, the first auction house, and he has three museums. So uh, he's a French guy and he's a Prussian. Yeah, the second so one, Sotheby's, is owned by Mr. Draghi. He's also mm -hmm. a French guy. Uh, he doesn't have the less uh, story in art than Mr. Pinot. Uh, of course, but all this, uh, yeah. and, and Paris is the most beautiful city in the world, as <laughs> everybody knows. So at last, so <laughs> so at last, uh, Paris uh, is recognized as being naturally the, the the place to be, the place to be, the place to be in Europe, and also helped by the declining of uh, London because of Brexit. That's my opinion. You yeah. know, it's not. Uh, I mean, the UK is still the second largest art market in the world. Let's not forget yeah. that with all this talk. But <laughs> yes, it is. And the offer is Paris is, is great. Yeah. So moving on. Um, what well, how would you explain the, the, the rise of Paris? Of course, uh, of course, all these these uh, these ideas uh, they make a lot of sense. Of course, we're talking about Brexit. We're talking about like this moment of all the private foundations. We're talking about people like Patricia, who's been bringing a lot of energy to the city. Sorry, sorry. that's Thank true. You. A lot of like, energy. A lot of energy. Like like what is happening in your building is pretty <laughs> exciting <laughs> <laughs> to to start with, but uh, but indeed this this possibility of having Paris as a meeting point. You know, I believe that also we're in a moment when the world is looking again not only at the huge cities, but looking again at places where you can have personal interaction, where people can have like different kind of dialogue. And Paris offers that. Yeah. It's a city where people like just sit, talk, exchange. This is part of the DNA yeah, of the cafe. city. And we're looking for that yeah. again in the art world. You know, it's not about the trading, it's about the exchanging. I yes, also think yeah. that the decline of online buying has contributed to this. I mean, one thing that we saw over the last five years was really that people were buying more art online. There was a yeah. rise of, oh yeah, there was a rise of digital art platforms. Your favorite thing, Instagram, was yeah, really quite like that, an important exactly. buying oh, yeah. channel, you know? And what we've seen, I think, over the last year now is really that the online buying habits have gone down. Digital really is declining, not just in terms of NFTs being not interesting anymore. I think that's also a trend shift. But also people want to buy art in person. You know, 85% of art purchases now are people going to a gallery, seeing the art and buying the art. So, so it's very much back to the roots. Is that your experience as well, Felipe? Big time. And otherwise it doesn't make sense. You know, the whole buying through PDF, the whole buying through Instagram, of course, internet helps us a lot. And internet like, is a tool that makes people like uh, get in touch with art, get in touch with content, but like nothing replaces the experience of being in front of an yes. artwork. Nothing replaces the experience of being with the gallerist, with the curator, exactly. with the artist itself. And that's, in, and in this sense, I, I believe that Paris, uh, work so fast, Paris please. works <laughs> beautifully well. It's a place for yeah. people to see each other, you know? Yes, exactly. You know, it's a physical experience, uh, art. So I think it's important to go to visit ah, and to speak to the gallery, <laughs> not to the... Uh, <laughs> for me, pour moi, pour I mean, I have some French artists here, <laughs> but the most important is the way the, the gallery is able to translate what the artists want to say. So it's super important to go to some good galleries, young and uh, big or whatever, but very good, we are close to the artists and explain well the work of what the, 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 the artists wanted to translate. And, and do you think in Paris we are closer of the artists? No, is, no, I'm close to the gallery. <laughs> I'm and, very and, close and, to the gallery. And of the artists as well. You know, artists want to be in Paris. Like, artists like ah, yeah. to be here. Like, ah, yeah. This is a city where people... Many artists wanted to be in Berlin. 
So why do you explain that Paris? Because it was cheap. Many cheap. other it was reasons. Cheap it was cheap and it's it no longer no, cheap. It's not no longer cheap, not cheap and anymore. nothing happened. The collector did not come. So you here think that there are many artists who are coming to from here. Berlin to Paris? They, yes. Yeah. yeah. yeah? Many. Yeah. Yeah, is that very I mean, good news today? I spent <laughs> 11 years in Berlin from 2006 to 2017, and I can tell you now that the atmosphere in the city is very much that artists are leaving and they're coming again to Paris, but also yeah. to London. So, you know, there is very much going back to these like old epicenters of the art world because there is this cult critical mass of collectors, of institutions, of curators as well, you know, because uh, I think it's always the essence of a network that creates a city. Yes, you know? And I think that Paris just happens. I mean, we're talking a lot about Paris right now. I know that. But I think that's really uh, what's making this energy, this uh, critical mass happen here. Um, and I wanted to shift gears a little bit and ask you, Patricia, what do you think are the dangers of collecting art today? The dangers of collecting, if you listen to fashion, it's like a souffle goes up and down. So... <laughs> So don't listen to fashion because it means fashion means it's already passé. So uh, I think you have to be very careful uh, not to, to, to collect with your ears. Uh, I think for me, I mean, old fashioned art history is important because what I see in a lot of artists, uh, they re re read or they Oh, I don't know if they do, do it on purpose, uh, but it's like uh, uh, revisiting art history and make it brighter and uh, bigger, and uh, but with the same reference. And uh, and so people think they, they are discovering something, but it's been done in the 50s or in the 30s, or in, you know. So it's... It's very. Uh, it's a big exercise right now to look at art, to see what. I mean, it's true that what is wonderful right now and what my collection is about. It's very political. It's about uh, the society, what we're going through, and all the problem of our societies. But still, it's very uh, dangerous to be. Uh, not, not caught by fashions. So you have to stay very, uh, you mindful. know. Mindful. Yes, mindful. So and, 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 and try to know a little bit uh, art yeah. history. Don't I, trust I, top ten lists. Yeah. I, would say, yeah. I would say that the, the, the big danger is to, is to, you have to beware of charlatan, you know, and you have to have a very good art advisor who is very serious and reasonable, and you have to improve your knowledge, you have to, to discover by yourself, you have to go to museum, you have to read books and so on, and then uh, yeah, you, you, avoid, you avoid yeah. dangers. <laughs> and, 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 and also and for and, oh, yes, beware of charlatans. It's, it's, and <laughs> also, I mean, some galleries. You know, so when you go to a good gallery like Madis Wood, they protect their artists. They don't sell to anyone. They they are very careful to who they sell, and they try to position the, the artists in museum institutions. So they really do a very. I, I respect first. I respect a lot the galleries. I don't like really to go to buy directly to the, from the, to the artist. In, uh, you know, I mean, uh, except I have two friends here, <laughs> but they don't have a gallery yet, but uh, I will always support the gallery because they do such a work and they support so much the artist to I mean, and, 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 it, and it's about long-term engagements, yes. no? Like so, like we w when we are uh, uh, exchanging with collectors, when we are like engaging collectors with the gallery, we're looking for long-term collaborations. We're looking yeah. for collectors that are going to be with the same artists for long, mm. right? We're not thinking about people that are just like going for one work of each yeah. artist just to have. We're thinking about exactly. like. A, 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 a long-term collaboration that will see the artist flourishing, that collection flourishing, right? Yes. Like that's that's what we've been doing yes. together. Uh, as a collector, which I am <laughs> mostly, I I always say it's like a conjugations, you know, like 
I collect in depth until uh, I can. I cannot because the price became too expensive, and uh, that is where I stop usually. <laughs> but I think I don't like to buy a sample, so I think it's important to have more work of the artist. It give you. I mean. Buying is like writing your own book, your, the book of your life, and it's a reflection of yourself. So, uh, so it's important. So you have different chapters, and you have a chapter with an artist, which I, and it's important to be very faithful. And but yeah. what if the love affair ends? I mean, people change, tastes yeah, change. But you evolve. You have different okay. chapter in your life. People so change yeah. a lot. <laughs> and, <laughs> you and, change and love. The, <laughs> the mentalities change a lot. Now you have very yo younger collect collectors, new collectors, and uh, for instance, in France, in the mentality and culture of ancient collectors, you didn't resell. It was. Uh, yeah, exactly. It was not. It was not polite. It was not. Uh, so now you are. Uh, many of them they resell. Some of them they are going into depth to buy arts, and so they need to resell. So it's a, this makes yeah, the it's market. It's healthy uh, to resell, I'm but, sure. But, 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 but it's a new resell? generation of collectors because before it was not. Uh, it just it just sometimes became a bit too fast. Too Maybe fast. you know. Way too fast, and too that's what we're all. And that's like. a danger. Okay, that's okay. a danger too. People so like yeah, going into depth for 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 exactly. going that's, out. That's, that's yeah, yeah. called speculation. It's called speculation. Not it's like not the exercise you want to. That's have. not collecting but art. That is like playing with uh, what we do. Yeah. You know? yeah. What we do is very very important. We are really supporting brilliant times, brilliant minds of our time, mm -hmm. and by collecting art in the way that we understand uh, that collecting art should be. We are all supporting these brilliant minds and giving them the oxygen to continue to produce, to continue to exist, to keep their studios alive. We're not here to, this is not a stock market, you know, this, it's not about buying and selling. Of course, selling is okay and it's totally fine and it can be done in the right I way. I don't sell a no. lot I'm personally. So. No, but a, I think every, <laughs> I'm not, everyone I'm not sells pleading for more. reselling. You have to sell I'm not pleading point. for reselling. I, I just say that it's a new, it's a new way and uh, many new collectors. But now, they are not collectors; they are speculators. No, and no, it, they some collect are collectors. With, uh, some are collectors, but things are going mm. quicker. I, I think Sorry, I think uh, the younger generation, as you say, I think the attitude is slightly different. Also, they tend to have smaller apartments. And if you want to continue but a collecting know, journey... You know, I don't have a huge apartment. I, yeah. uh, and I don't... You store. I don't buy for the apartment to put above my sofa. Mm. It goes directly to my storage. Mm. Yeah, no, I know it's uh, kind uh, of Patricia, sick. As you know, I, say I resell <laughs> very, very few because it's very painful for me. It's very difficult for me because it's a, it's, it's a passion and it's a story of love. So even if I don't love any much, uh, I still like mm. what I bought uh, 30 years ago. But uh, my taste changed. And uh, he, he, when I buy a new piece of art, I want to hang it in, in my yeah, living room. But you, you, uh, you my walls are not expandable, so I'm obliged to take down some, other, some pieces. Then I send them to the storage, but I don't sell them. And for a few years, they stay in the storage. And after a few years, I say, well, now I have to select because I, I cannot have everything in the storage. And so I decide, but it's very difficult for me, to sell, but I think that the new generation doesn't have these uh, sequences of uh, buying and not selling and finally selling, but just a little and, uh, and so on. So, 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 so I tell you, I give you not only for speculation. You, you change your collections every year, <laughs> and you invite your friends to come and see. <laughs> it's like a Christmas tree. So you you bring uh, you bring new work every year. You put it in your storage and you look, you buy an uh, art binder or something, you look at it and you re reorganize your collections with a different, uh, you know, I mean, new new vision. But I, I don't mind to have things in my storage. I really do not mind. It's, I like to keep all, you know, I do collect certain artists in really in, in depth. Like so Mike if, Kelly, for example. Yes, my, like Mike Kelly. If I was going to sell one piece, I think I will sell the old collection. It means I don't love you anymore. 
<laughs> <laughs> no, it's like the way it's a I big breakup. <laughs> it's a big breakup. And, so and, I'm and not by collecting uh, means also I am like not a dealer. storage in some way, you know, yeah. like when you are it, collecting, you, suffer. You, you are not just having art around you. No, 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 no. I mean, collecting is painful. It's painful. You don't have enough space. You don't have enough money. You don't have enough, uh, and you and you suffer. It's a big, you know. You are always trying in your head, uh, you know. Say, okay, I will sell this. I will, uh, but, but you don't sell. <laughs> <laughs> so you you have to work on it, and it's it's painful. You you are in total pain. You once said that it was like an addiction. It's an addiction, and I have news for you: you cannot get cured. <laughs> <laughs> There's no art rehab. No, 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 no art rehab. Um, and I just wanted to ask now, because I feel like we're coming more towards the end. I feel like, why should anyone start collecting art today? It's expensive. It's difficult to get into. If you don't know the right things, if you don't know the right people, it's easy to make mistakes. How do you start? Honestly, galleries. Like you yeah. start by going to galleries, you start mm -hmm. by connecting with galleries. Like our job uh, is to connect people. Our job is to yeah. host collectors at, in, in, in our spaces. Yeah. Our job is to like bring curators, advisors, artists together and to like create this this kind of platform, right, Patricia? And, and, like and, and people look at like art advisors collection. like Patricia also like uh, play this role of like like putting like connecting the dots no an, an art advisor has to protect the, the 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 person the collector from his impulse i wish i, <laughs> sometimes I was believe protecting it, but, some, but sometimes also believe in the impulses like yeah you have to awesome. yes but you have to be um, you know you cannot buy everything so you have to you have also you, you have to play in your own court you know, you cannot, you know, I love Twombly, I will never have a Twombly. But you, you, you have to play in your own law work, uh, court, but also you have to have a link to your collection. It's important to say, to create a message of what you want, to, to, ex have a to express a system. And also, um, to, it's important to look at collections. You learn a lot from collections, good collections. Galleries are super important because, you know, they, 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 and also curators, museum, you must go to museums, small institutions. Uh, there is plenty of small institutions, very, uh, and, and traveling. When you arrive, you brush your teeth and you go outside and you do the galleries and you go to the, to the institutions and you don't stop. So that's what we do. You wear yeah, a good in, pair of shoes. In, yeah, and your <laughs> pair of shoes, that's important. But it's, you look, you look, you look, and you exercise. So an art advisor has to put you on the right track, and, but at the end, it's you who make the decisions. So it's not the art advisor. The, the art advisor has to tell you, if you buy an expensive work, to tell you what the price, the current price in the market, if it's been uh, at auctions, uh, the condition report, all those things to protect you, to to analyze uh, and to make the research for you. Where is it? But the important things is to look and look and to train your eyes and more. And you learn every day. And I say one thing, it's the best lift in life. You never get old. <laughs> so, so because you are always in contact with new I, 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 would like I, co I completely agree with Patricia. Uh, you have to look, to look, to look, but and you have to look to to get be, to have a better knowledge, and you have to look to feel uh, the time to feel the time to feel where the we are. Time. Right now, it's very challenging. And to, and to retain yourself of buying too fast. I was a compulsive buyer thirty years ago when I begin my yeah, collection, I, and I was buying at first glance. You see, I saw a piece. Oh, whoa, whoa! I love, love this. I sight. want it. I buy it. La and, food. Yeah, and we, two we hours, are more reasonable. And two hours later, I was seeing another one in the fair. Oh, maybe I should have <laughs> bought this one. But, uh, so so now I, uh, I try so. because it's not always easy because <laughs> galleries are very good to tell you, no, 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 you have to tell me now, you know, mm -hmm. I can give you an option, but uh, for 15 minutes, half an hour maybe, but you know, this piece is so fantastic that uh, I cannot keep it such a long time, so I say, uh, uh, wait a minute. And so I uh, 
forbid myself to buy at the first glance. I say, now give me an option for one or two hours. And it's not to go and see if I see something better. It's to come back, have a second glance, That's and good. then I see it differently. First glance, I discover, uh, oh, it's amazing. And second glance, well, I analyze. Uh, it's not the same. Take your time. It, it, it's not the same. Right now, you have the opportunity. And sometimes after the second mm -hmm. glance, I, Altogether, it was one hour or two hours, but I buy it. Bon. Yeah. So, but, so not to rush, look and look and look, and increase your knowledge, uh, improve, improve in, in art and in art history also, in art history. Uh, and this is where advisor comes to help mm -hmm. you to see. So trust you know, your advisor. You, I think, well, yeah, uh, yeah, you put an, an advisor in front of an expensive work, you know it's not so good, <laughs> and a, ch a cheap one. And you ask which one to choose. And if the person go for the cheap one, take the, the advisor. <laughs> <laughs> so that's your art yeah. advisor yeah. test. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's an advisor is there to protect you. It's not there to make the money. It's just to build a collection together. It's not like one shot, you know. It's a long-term relationship. and. Uh, so it's a long journey, and it's not about the price. It's about the <coughs> quality of the work and the, the coher coherence, coherence, and yeah. coherence of, of in, the co in the collections. I mean, you work together. I mean, you've bought from Mendes Wood DM. I think oh, you've yeah. also purchased from Mendes Wood uh, oh, DM. Very I, much uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> I have great lunch with him in the closet with the peanuts, <laughs> <laughs> and he sold me something. <laughs> No, because you know I am an addict, so it's I bought, easy. <laughs> I, bought, I don't. I, I bought most most of the time by myself, and I, yeah, uh, very because he is a friend of mine. Uh, Patricia accepts to give me some advice, and sometimes yeah. he bought uh, with her, and I, I don't regret it. Uh, James Lee Bayer, yeah. France yeah. West, yeah. A very nice papier mâché of France West, and so uh, very good pieces. Okay. Not yeah. bad. I mean, James Lee Byers and, Wood, and Sonia Hans, Gomez. I, I would not argue Sonia. with those choices. You know? and, and in Mendes Wood, but yeah. I said, I know it was not with Patricia, another guy, but I yeah, went. Sorry that you bought a, a long time Gomez. ago. Yeah, amazing yeah. work, amazing work. Yeah. So I'm going to start um, summing up here. Uh, on the way, <laughs> I've, I've been talking to people these last two days, advisors, including mm -hmm. Patricia, mm -hmm. collectors, gallerists, and I came up with 10 points here, and I think we've been discussing them, so I'm going to sort of read them out, and if you disagree with me, interrupt me. If you agree with me, also feel free to interrupt with me. So my first thing that I wrote down was, do your research and have a plan. I think we all agree with that. No, big time. Do, do your research. And as Patricia said, like, see it's art. The, the more art you see, the more art you understand, the more art you More. like, the more your eyes are open, the more you can appreciate. You know? So like, like of, of course, there is method, but it's also about spending a lot of time in that. I it's won't say do your research, but don't have a plan. No. I, I never <laughs> had no, any I strategy. No I, I, I didn't decide to buy this type, no. this type of, uh, of pieces. Company. You know, it's it's, it's matter of love. <laughs> it's a matter of love in instant. Huh? It's, uh, it's an in impulsion, you know. Yes. So it's, it's true. No, it's true to see what's happening today. So because so you said, Patricia, you have to have a line. Yeah. No. But you have a line. Yeah. You. But you can also uh, I, grow, and and your taste is allowed to change because it's normal to change. You are one person. It's evolution. At, uh, yeah, evolution of changing. life, or evolution of the society, and evolution of. The, uh, of the, I the begin a lot with French figurative contemporary art that Patricia hates. No, and but she, now I'm not years as and years yes. she told me, well, you're really, it's, it's bullshit what you're buying. Uh, <laughs> ah, I don't even conceptual. want, I don't even want to look. <laughs> but we don't, we don't mention any name, I of course. Really, yeah, no, but but uh, and then I, I agree now, and I evolved very minimalist and uh, conceptual. Yeah, but yeah, right now but I was very that, and now I'm more into understanding painting, which is painful. You know, you. Art is painful. You challenge yourself. It's not mashed potatoes. You have to, hmm. to, to challenge yourself. It's a reflection on yourself. And also, uh, you should not listen to, to other people. 
Mm. And Wait, we're coming to that. <laughs> <laughs> so then what we've uh, also discussed is the idea of taking time to decide, you know. And there's an English saying that says, marry in haste, repent at leisure. Yeah. No. Okay. Yes, haste. Mm -hmm. yeah. Haste to be fast, too fast, too quick. I am fast, unfortunately. <laughs> but for, for my client, I'm not fast because I want to analyze, and it's harder to spend someone's money. Uh, mm -hmm. so, yeah, so, but for you, you it's, it's an old process in your uh, head, and it's very, not logic. But, <laughs> but, for, other but for other people, you have to be, because you, you have responsibilities. You have responsibility mm -hmm. of the collections, you have responsibility of the future of the collections, mm. and the money this person is going to spend, it will come back and he's not happy. And so what do you do? I want to resell, blah, blah, blah. And so it's very, uh, so much respons responsibility uh, to occur for the other person. For me, I take my own responsibility, it's me with me. So, <laughs> so this, that's the only um, difference. When, so this, this brings me to number three. When we first met Patricia a few weeks ago, you told me that if your friends told you they will like something, you reconsider it. Yeah. No. Don't trust anyone else's opinions. Yeah, no, what I, uh, what I say is, uh, you know, there's people you value very much, artists, curators, galleries, certain galleries. <laughs> Even if they are good, but they don't fit in my uh, way of thinking. Uh, so, you know what, if you some people come and say, oh, it's wonderful, blah, blah, blah. So you have to question yourself if you're not sure about this artist. You say, ah, maybe it's not, you know, you did not know if it was good or not. And you say, oh, maybe it's not that good because it's too easy. I think art is not an easy journey. So it's, it has to be a challenge. And it's not decorative. It's a lot of pleasure. Don't it's also uh, a pleasure, it's, but it's, it's painful. Art. But, it's, but pleasure uh, it's is, a lot a, is pleasure. painful too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, that brings me on to number four. I think this one's uh, not controversial. Buying from a PDF was never a good idea. No, it's like Listen, so no, sometimes no. like buying by PDF when you already know the artist, when yeah, you yeah. already know what you're yeah. talking about, and you are like in another part of the world. Of course, it's just a yeah. tool, but this yeah. idea of like collecting through PDF and so many collections that were built buying by PDF with works that went straight to storage, right? Yeah. So collectors that sometimes never saw what they were buying, mm -hmm. like that's that's what is and, complicated. And it's hard to and see. No. It's not for it's like people. They are not. They are very good in person. And they are not good on photography, so you don't have the same feeling. It's a feeling, so it's a physical apparently. Yeah. It's a physical feeling. It's not yeah. a good idea, yeah. but if you know very well the artist and exactly. if you it's know very well his work, you can do it sometimes. But of course, it doesn't this replace the, the physical <laughs> contact a right and now. the visual impact. There's a Rothko right now at Art Basel, Paris Plus, Paris Plus Par Art Basel, pardon oh, me. And it's beautiful Rothko. Yeah. And when I saw the first image, it was bright green and bright red in the yeah, reproduction. That's why it's, it's, it's just emphasized. And also, it yeah. depends on the trust you have with your art advisor. If, yeah. if the piece is presented by your art advisor who knows you well, who knows your test, and in which, and, and if you trust him, you can say, yeah, okay. Uh, yeah. You need, you know. Because I, now you, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You but, need to go and look. But I look. prefer to see. Of course. For a certain yeah, amount, the art advisor has to go and look at the work. That is super important because it's not photogenic. I mean, there is, like you say, the Roscoe looks like so super, but it was not as. A, it's different. Yeah, it's very different. Moving on to number five, very important subject know your budget. Credit is expensive at the moment, it's yes expensive no. to borrow. Don't, no, you don't, I mean, borrow. No, I don't borrow. No, but oh, people take loans to buy art. No, you think so? Yeah, they definitely do. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some people, they, they buy, and they don't know how they are going to pay. Yeah. But they, ah, they, you have, you have and, kind no, of but term I'm with talking the about gallery. people who are paying, because they find the way, because they found it in love. And yeah, so no, no, but you have terms with the galleries. The gallery are very good uh, banker. <laughs> in your early journey, when it you were depends, just, it depends. Patricia, yeah. in your early journey when you were starting out as an art advisor, you told us the story of how because uh, you gave an interview to us, right? Yeah. And you told how you would get a credit from some of the yeah, galleries. I, I, that was a time where you could uh, 
I was working with uh, Eliana Sanaben and Metro Pictures. So I used to sell the work and I was like in a bar, you know, when you are positive or negative. So I, I used to sell the work, never asked for the commissions, and I was buying the work. Uh, now, it's, and or going to a gallery and saying, listen, I have debt to that gallery, can you wire the money to this gallery? So the money would never came to. So most of my collection at the beginning was made out of commissions. And uh, that was the time where we could do now. You cannot even <laughs> buy Sadly. anything without. <laughs> so you so, need to figure out another way to yeah, finance your yeah, Mike yeah, Kelly. No, but but uh, galleries are very nice. And they suffer a lot because, you know, it takes forever to be paid and they have huge expenses. So That brings me to number six. Also not controversial. Instagram is misleading. Visit your local gallery instead. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. the same. No? So, yeah, I don't look at Instagram. No. And there are lots of great local galleries in Paris, like yeah. more and more. So <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. That brings me to number seven, which is trust your dealer. A treasure, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely, I think. Yeah. Uh, if you have a good relationship with your galleries, he will advise you to t take this piece or, or another piece. He will not sell you. Yes, but you, uh, you have to keep your, uh, uh, yeah, your, 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 your self-control and your independency. You're not too, yeah. to be uh, mentally yeah, but dependent no, but of, the your, of your art advisor. It, Some people it, are totally, totally mentally dependent of their art advisor. Ah, yes, but he told me to buy this. He told me not to buy this. I said, hey, no, oh. you have to do it. No, you have to give Your choice. test is the most important. Yes, but yeah. what I say is not the collection of the advisor. The advisor is to introduce you to work yeah. when you don't have time to go and to do all the gallery and to tell you where to go and to give you a map uh, of what you know you should be looking at. at and the then end, something it's you happens with check. the piece. Yeah. <laughs> something happens between the collector yeah. and the, yeah, and yeah, the, and the and work. The piece of art but or the, not. The advisor <laughs> is there to, to make the research and to because we uh, we get all the, yeah, the galleries all over the world and we are informed course, more course, you don't uh, have time. I'm afraid yeah. we're sort of running out of time and I would like to open up for questions in a little bit. But I think you've heard from this discussion it's about the process, it's not a hunt. And then don't skimp on shipping. This is advice I had from a gallerist. Don't go to FedEx if you just spent, you know, eighty thousand dollars on a piece. Shipping. No never shipping. Never. Yeah, never. Like, <laughs> just don't, and don't insist. <laughs> <laughs> don't get a cheap shipping company. And then, last but not least, know the size of your elevator. No, because you can have elevators from the outside. If it's very expensive, you need to budget. No. So you have no. to know. Uh, it's not supposed to but be you have to know the size of, <laughs> no, of your windows if you do that. Yeah, the size of the window. The size of, the of your windows, windows is also important. I sold a Trombley in my <laughs> early time. Is a man was living on the twenty-second floor, <laughs> and he was never able to get it in. Size of the window is the most important. Doors and windows. I'm going to yeah. cross it out and write window. So my favorite story here is there's a Berlin-based collector, very well known, called Erika Hoffman. Yeah. And she had this wonderful apartment in this old factory building in the middle of Berlin. And she had this Frank Stella that weighed three and a half tons. No way to get it through. They had to open up the ceiling, open up I the guess. roof, I and crate that. it in. Yes. And that thing's never, ever moving, let's face it. Anyway, yeah. thank you very much, my brilliant thank panel. You. And I would like to now open up to questions. Mm. There's a microphone, so if anyone wants to ask anyone, please specify whom you're addressing your question to. No? No. <laughs> we all shy? I think it's half past six. I think every Oh, lady in the middle. Well, well, sorry. Uh, well, thank you so much. It was so interesting. Uh, it's just a quick question, but to all of you in a way. Uh, what do you think of Paris as a hub for young artists, such as Push, Artagon, that are just places for young artists to just explore, and that are now going to galleries? Are there really something you are already looking at, or not yet because the prices for the both artists are just too low now? No, oh, absolutely not. We go to Push. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we go to Push. We go to... Pantin, we go to, absolutely, that, you know, I mean, I was going to Belleville, like, all the time, I was, no, I mean, that is what is interesting, it's why pa Paris is, is growing outside of Paris, and what, 
it is going to happen. It's all the artists are going to be there. You know, you have so many great things happening on the skirt of Paris, and that is where they have to be, and where it's going to be. Uh, yes, what's happening? No, he, he goes there. We all go all the time. Yeah, all the time. No, it's not a question of price. It's a question of talents and their own writing and the challenge of the of the work. No, and it's a question of curiosity. Uh, you know, curiosity like of like and also if the work is challenging for me and their own writing, what is important, I always look for something which is very, uh, you know, with a different writing. And the, and the challenge can be in it's different parts of the city. And it can, it can be in the Fondation Louis Vuitton, in yeah, the booth, yeah, yeah. or in Push. And so I can tell you that you have to become a friend of uh, Palais de Tokyo. <laughs> because we are organizing uh, many escapades outside of Paris and y in huge places where you have many young artists, many uh, yeah. comedy studios, uh, ateliers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, not every Saturday, but uh, one Saturday per month, you know, is, uh, we're organizing uh, fantastic sure. visits great of, tour. Great of, tour. Yes, of studios. Sure. Maybe Everyone is supporting the young artists. We, we want that, absolutely. Super. Anyone else? Any other questions? Yeah. Hello, this is Sylvie from San Francisco. Uh, thank you for your insightful contributions. My question is, what are your predictions for the art market 2024? I th who, who are you asking? Whoever <laughs> wants to contribute. La, la thank you. The du marché de 1924. It will be, I think it will be less rush, less, and uh, it will take time to look at the art in a way we should be looking, like I say. And I think it's going to be uh, very good because great artists are going to be born. And uh, I think art will be still there because it's all, you know, I think it's, it will be a great moment. I mean, you know, the energy is there and it's a way of getting out of all the problem, and it's a yes, savior for all of us. Of course, market is not going to stop, but uh, market... It's going uh, to slow down, I mean, yes, we but, need uh, that. You know, you, you have a, so, so, so huge political, geopolitical problems by now, uh, that uh, who can say how it will be 2024, and the increase of uh, rates of interest in another point of view is also important. Yeah, that's a problem. So many, so many things. <coughs> How will be the market? And the market, uh, art market is less than many others, but a little bit connecting, connected with... Uh, but it will be more affordable, <coughs> I think. With other markets. Because, you know, you buy something 8,000 and the next day is 250. I mean, who can buy? So he eliminate a lot of uh, collectors. And for the artists, it's very, very dangerous because mm. you have a less audience and they have so much pressure to be good and they, poof, they, they, they disappeared. And when they disappeared, it's very difficult for them to be born again. Thank you. Next question. Any other, anyone else? At the back. Uh, hello. Uh, my name is Kisi, and you've mentioned of how to buy the art, trust your art advisor. However, mm -hmm. however, I want to know from your own opinion, when before you buying the art itself, in what prospect are you going to see it's worth of buying that art apart from the budget and how your art advisor advises the art? Your taste, I think. It depends on the taste of the person. Mm. You, so you have to go with the taste of the person. And the, there is an artist they, they really like. Yeah, I will advise to be uh, looking at this artist on the long term, not on one short term. It has more, uh, it's more relevant for the... For the the yeah, if, if the work is, if the, yeah. if the work touches you, how yeah. the work communicates with you, yeah. and how do you feel about supporting that artist long term? Yeah, it's a it's a long term relationship. Yeah, so if you but see I think money is an issue. I mean, when it's too expensive, mm -hmm. you, you can admire from afar. Yeah, <laughs> you buy no, but I like think me. it's important. Yeah, for if you discover a young artist to be 
very supportive to this artist and to to keep collecting the the, the, the work as as long as you can. Well, thank you very much. I think that's all we've got time for. Thank you for thank joining you. us this evening, and thank you, thank you, uh, Philippe, Philippe, and particularly Patricia. Thank you.